Hey everyone, uh, my name's Andy, channel's Finding Value. I wanna cover something that is a little bit different. Uh, I call it price movements. And what I see is a, is a bunch of, a bunch of people make up stories and then they say, this is why the price moved. A lot of those things are just made up. There's no way to prove or disprove the movement based off of whatever news. Uh, it's all short-term noise. So I wanted to touch a couple of things on price movements. So we'll jump in and I wanna talk about price movements. So articles and news. Outside of some completely obvious statements that, might, that may, may move markets, most news and articles make up reasons of why prices have moved. They don't actually know for a fact that whatever they're reporting did actually move the price. So they don't actually know if they, what they are reporting actually moved the price or not. And think about it for a few minutes. How do these news reporters actually know if what they are reporting actually moved the prices? How would they know that? So I, I just want everyone to be careful what you are listening to and how you are correlating that price movement to whatever news they're telling you. Because most of the things they, they don't know. Uh, unless everything fell or everything went up a very large amount right when that news came out, I mean, then you could say it's probably legit. But if it's just some random day where it was down or up, they just make it up. So... And here, here's some other things, like people that you listen to. Be careful who you listen to or read articles from. Oftentimes they are not correct and it really leaves people confused. A lot of people are telling others misinformation on YouTube and on the news. And with respect to the news, perhaps they're doing this on purpose. I started making a lot better gains once I figured out how this worked by myself. I basically had to figure this out all by myself. Most others are just giving opinions and perhaps not facts. And some of this stuff, you're not gonna, all you're gonna have is opinions. You're not gonna have facts because we don't know the future. But just be careful who you listen to and what information and data you're extracting from them. So how to trade. Some people think they are right and, it, and sometimes just by happenstance, uh, or because of a normal pullback, they might be right for that short period of time. And they might miscorrelate those two things. What I'm going to, to tell you is the market is what and where you should be getting your signals from. And what I'm doing is on this channel, I'm showing you what those signals are on a weekly basis, whether it be ratios or the, the 10 year, 30 year yield, dollar in, you know, the dollar prices, how they're moving, uh, copper, platinum, all of these things we're looking at and, and we're looking at what the market is telling us real time. I am not making something up and telling you that we're going to have inflation or deflation based off of whatever data is, you know, whatever data I seem to hold most important. What I do is I look, at the I look at the data that the market's telling me, I look at the charts of what it's telling me, and I say, are we in an inflationary push or is it in a deflationary kind of collapse? And what I'm seeing is it's an inflationary push based off of the data that we have, uh, based off of real estate, based off of all the signals that the market's telling us. And this is really you know, the only short-term data that we should be considering. You can't say that all these things are going up and that we have deflation. Uh, they can speculate on deflation coming, but we have to see it in the charts first uh, before we should really consider that viewpoint anyway, if, if that makes sense. So our window might be a, a couple of months to, to take action when these indicators all kind of fall if we, if we are gonna have deflation. So it's it's, if someone says we're going to have deflation in six months, it's not going to matter because our indicators give us a two-month window anyway. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be too worried about a, deflation, a deflation scare unless all of the market indicators are telling us that something's going to happen. Because they usually ha that usually goes first before 
our investments would go. And I'm not gonna sell out anyway because I know the long-term uh, market conditions. So I'm, I'm not worried about that. Uh, understand future demand. So look at future demand and look at history to see what it tells us. Are market conditions conducive for, for what investments? Ratios telling us relative value compared to history. The inflation deflation history, the real estate market and what the history looks like there. Real estate markets are roughly 18 years uh, cycle lengths. And when I said it's gonna take us rough, roughly 20 to 22 years for me to see this um, commodity cycle again, that's what I'm basing it off of is the real estate market cycle basically. It's 18 to, 18 to 22 years. And how lending works, understand that. Because if you know how lending works, uh, if you know that if, the, if we have an increasing real estate market in terms of prices, that's gonna turn on housing starts. And if we know that the majority of lending comes from the commercial banks into re residential real estate, that is where your inflation comes from. And if the ratios are telling us that uh, everything that we own is undervalued and it does very well under a real estate market boom in an expansion phase in an inflationary push, uh, I think we're in the right spots. So the market conditions are very conducive for commodities right now. So conclusion here is don't be a parrot of someone else's thesis. Develop your own ideas and run with them. Try them out. Check if what they are telling you is correct. Form your own opinions and fill in the gaps if you don't understand what they're saying. Because a lot of these people, they, they say something and they may not understand it completely. And as long as you're learning something from them, if there's a way that you can fill in that gap, go ahead and do it. Sometimes it's best to never put any news to a price movement. You just say, we had a down day today. There was more sellers than buyers. Sometimes you have to do that. The news, it, it just tries to correlate things and it messes things up. So the best returns that I've had is when I don't listen to anyone else. Uh, I figure this stuff out myself. I, I correlate it. I, I try to see, uh, so I'll, I'll overlay multiple gra uh, charts and I'll see if there's any correlations that I can find. If you look at the housing starts, if you, you type in Fred housing starts and you just pull up a graph, you'll see that whenever housing starts decline, deflation happens when, when the housing starts go down. Whenever housing starts go up above the, into an expansion phase, it's inflation and rising interest rate environment. Almost every time. Well, I think every time. So that's one thing that I correlated was the commodity super cycle to housing starts because I was like, there's no way that the, the correlation between housing starts when they go into an expansion phase matches perfectly with a commodities boom. And then the, the top matches exactly with the housing starts top. I don't think there's too many people that, that correlated that together. But you're part of this channel. Uh, you now understand that correlation and you can, you know, invest accordingly to that housing start, the housing expand, real estate expansion phase and the commodities boom that's coming. And if you know all of this, if you can tie this all together and really understand the valuation, the real estate cycle and the commodity cycle, uh, it's very easy to hold on. If you guys like this content, click the thumbs up button. Appreciate you guys listening. Uh, and thank you. This is finding value.